How many times have you said to yourself, I'm going to succeed, and yet you keep coming up short? You probably notice that high achievers with heart do things differently, but you just can't put your finger on it. You're curious about why high achievers accomplish more and have more satisfying relationships. It's because success is the result of your mindset and the consistent actions you take. This show is designed with your success in mind. By revealing these powerful patterns of our dynamic individuals and guest experts, you can model what they do and apply to your future success now. Let's roll up our sleeves and get started. My name is Brigitte Höfele, and this is the Success Patterns Show. And it's not just any Success pattern Show today. It is a very special Success pattern Show because it is my birthday. Happy birthday to me, and thank you for celebrating with me for tuning into the Success pattern Show as we bring you Golden Nuggets because success patterns are way more valuable than ideas. Let me explain that thought. Ideas, while very powerful, require trial and error, a lot of time to put into action. Just think about manufacturing. First, you have an idea, then proof of concept, then working prototype, then small production badges, and then finally, full scale production. This can take months, maybe even years, and you may have met some people that are a collector of ideas, but they do little else. You're not looking for ideas. Forget everything that you ever heard about ideas. You are looking for success patterns because success patterns are different and success patterns are better. Why? Well, they're proven, have a logical sequence of steps to follow, have an action imperative, and deliver consistent results. In today's show, you're going to learn valuable success patterns from a leadership coach and consultant that actually doesn't teach leadership. I know, it sounds intriguing. He helps leaders and organizations to create an environment of inclusion and innovation by training their teams on effective leadership and communication practices while undoing cultural dysfunctions. We're going to dive deeper into that. My, my guest expert today is Sorel Catan, and he is a human behavior and transformation expert. He's the creator of Launching You, Accessing to Being a Leader that is Most Respected. He's helped entrepreneurs, CEOs, founders, owners of small to medium-sized businesses to improve their effectiveness, grow their business, and therefore enhance their lives. And as a leadership coach with over 20 years in the field of human growth and development, Sorel doesn't teach leadership, as I said earlier. Instead, he helps clients to focus on the distinctions between achievement and success, assisting as they create and embrace something much, much greater than themselves in the process, they become the leader that is most respected. So with a warm welcome uh, and happy birthday to me that Sorel is on the show. Thank you, Sorel, for being here. I'm uh, ringing the bell. I am singing happy birthday to my very best of friends. Brigitte, thank you so much for having me here with you. It's such an honor to be on Success Patterns. It's so wonderful to have you on. And, and I want to start our success pattern show with the end today. And let me explain. So Rel and I have just recently been in the same environment, although we didn't see each other, we've been in the same space. That's the State Farm Arena here in Atlanta to see Lionel Richie, which was an amazing concert. And you'll never guess well, I know so that you, you'll, you'll guess easily, but the other listeners and viewers, the opening act was Earth, Wind, and Fire, and they did an entire concert all by themselves, opening up. Oh, my, them. did they? Did they? You know, you're, you're beginning with the end, and there's something that's showing up for me as you juxtapose Earth, Wind, and Fire 
and Lionel Richie in concert. And I'm thinking of success patterns. And when I look at them, when I listen to them, the success patterns that are present for me are uh, one, do whatever the heck you love to do and pour everything you are and everything you've got in it. It's like the bass player from Earth, Wind and Fire has got to be in his late 70s. And three original members are still there and been at it for 50 years. 50 You're not years. at it for 50 years because you don't love it. Yeah. And and you could see no. it was in their entire being that showed. Yeah. They love being on that stage and sweating bullets. Oh my God. And there were sweating bullets. I swear I was in row T on the second front, I swear a sweat bead hit me in my forehead. You were in row T, I was in row P, so we weren't even that far from each other. <laughs> uh, Isn't that funny? So, but you know, you, you talk about the end. Yeah. And something about unexpected endings that really touches me right now. So I'm from Haiti. I am black and one of the patterns that comes with me as a black man is that I'm conscious that I'm black mm. and I'm conscious of what it means historically to be black. So when I enter a room that enters and I actually have to create my own little success pattern that goes something like this. I am not my skin color. Mm. I am who I say I am. Now, I don't have to do it consciously anymore, but I want people to be present to that, that in the context of the ending of uh, the concert, something miraculous happened. Lionel Richie chose to end, or at least semi, end the concert with We Are the World, acknowledged Michael Jackson for his contribution to that, and began singing the song and spontaneously my wife Susan stood up and grabbed the hand of the lady in the back row and the lady did a double take I did a double take so she, she grabbed my hand too and I looked at the lady I said don't worry we're just gonna sing together <laughs> right and because uh, it was a pattern interruption and yet it was the perfect ending to the concert because the very essence of the song we are the world was not just present but being demonstrated and being lived by the eight or so people who were complete strangers yeah. and who chose to hold hands for the entire song together weaving bobbing singing all off key <laughs> <laughs> and then and then in the end complete strangers hugging one another not saying a thing but leaving with i think for me was leaving with the conviction that the world truly is a friendly place because i say it is and I walk inside of my say. That's pure integrity right there. And there's so much more to that. And it's such a beautiful gesture. Yeah. This, the song itself says, it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. Yeah. We can't go on pretending day by day that somewhere, some, someone somewhere soon will make a cha change. Mm-hmm. I am the change. It starts with me. Yeah. And man, that could be the success pat pattern. I agree with say you. that to say that every other success pattern that you and I could mouth for the rest of eternity would be a derivative of that. 
as you as I'm remembering in, um, in my memory, the which was only a few days ago, it was almost like saying ourselves in a trance and he had us repeat, it's a choice we're making. It is a choice we're making. And it's a, ch so if we have a choice and we do have a choice to make a change, then why the heck is it so hard, Sorel? And how is it easier? <laughs> I, I love it. I love this question. Why is it so hard to choose being uh, the change I want? Uh, I'll speak for myself. It's really hard for me as a human being to be the change I want because my first tendency is always to pledge allegiance to the human being I've become. Mm -hmm. You know, the human being that uh, is wedded to his education. I am the human who's wedded to the people who surround me. I'm the human being who's wedded to my wife's beauty, beauty her beautiful hair, her smile, right? Uh, I, I walk around proud that I am that human being. So wherever I go, the change I seek appears as a threat to the existence of that human being I've become and my natural tendencies to protect that. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is hard for me to be the change I seek. It is hard for me to choose and yet in the moment, I actually relate to the human being I've become mm -hmm. as what it is, just that. It's a, a combination of my education, a combination of my upbringing as a Haitian man, a combination of my uh, the environment I'm in, a combination of what corporate America taught me, a combination of what historically being Black taught me, right? And then in this moment where I can say to myself, whether silently or out loud, I am a human being and my name is Sorel Ketan. Mm. I create the emergence of this success pattern, which is me disabusing myself mm. from the human being I've become. And I have that choice in any moment, but that choice isn't something I want people to know that the choice isn't something that you get to the point where it's natural to choose to be the change you want. It's never natural. What's there first is I want to protect the human being I've become. I want to stay that way. And it is noticing that, that actually opens the door to the success pattern called disabusing oneself, disabusing myself from identifying with the human being I've become. And then mouth the words, I am the way I say I am, and then give my word dominion over all of this. So there's awareness in that. There's awareness of of every moment if we want to. We have a choice to be aware of it or not. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because I think you know um, uh, what's bliss. Um, uh, just lost the word. Um, when you're ignoring it, it's bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance. Right? Ignorance. <laughs> Ignorance. How ignorance is bliss. So we have a choice to be aware of it, to acknowledge yeah. it, to do something with it, or just to ignore it. Where does ego come into play in all of this? Yeah, well, you know, when I mentioned earlier that I'm attached to the human being I've become, you could say that the human being I've become is the ego, mm -hmm. that which seeks to survive at all costs. And that which seeks to convince me that it's me. And yet, in a moment of awareness, right, where I can say, I am a human being, 
I have an ego and that's not me. I am how I say I am and who I say I am. Mm. The words themselves trigger the separation. And it's not, uh, try, try it on. It's not, once you say the words, it actually does happen. Because my brain hears the words that that's not me. And then something else is available in that moment. One thing that, uh, that, that I love, Brigida, is this. Our brains are so marvelous and yet so malleable. Mm. See, my brain cannot distinguish from the me that I've become from the me I say I am. And when I say I am X, my brain just runs with it. <clears throat> and no then question. I get to follow. No question whatsoever. And, you know, and if it questions, guess what I do? I say it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the success pattern of noticing my ego, I love to call it my individuality. The success pattern of noticing my individuality over and over and recognizing and acknowledging it just for what it is. Another success pattern, Brigida, is that the automatic behaviors, patterns of being, patterns of thoughts that come with the package called the human being I've become aren't bad. It's just what comes with the package. Bad, bad is a judgment, just as yeah. good as a judgment, right? So why judge it? Yeah, exactly. It requires no judgment. So another success pattern is to not fall in the trap of changing that. Mm. So there's it an acceptance. Notice it and choose to honor something else. Because see, I can spend a lifetime trying to change my own individuality or trying to change the human being I've become, which is really difficult. I swear, Brigitte, I'm from Haiti. And if you play Haitian music, I will break into dance right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, compare that brain pattern to the brain pattern that makes me unproductive at work or unproductive in life or unproductive in relationships. It's one and the same. Mm. To work hard to change the human being I've become is futile. Mm. But to notice it is mm -hmm. very helpful. Because in the moment I notice it, then I can take full advantage of what this is. Yeah, then you have a choice, like you said. Yeah, yeah. And there's an acceptance rather than fighting it. Because a lot of people are, they're like in it with themselves. They're fighting themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to say, when my mother and father met and in a moment in time they decided to conceive a baby the universe picked the sperm that would be the one mm -hmm. and that sperm and the the connection it made with that egg produced the most perfect human being that that encounter could have produced. Like right. the universe mustered up everything that it needed to muster up to produce. And I didn't say perfect, right? But the most perfect it could given the raw material given. So in that vein, another success pattern is the acknowledgement that as I am, and perhaps as you are, or as everyone is, we're each whole, perfect, and complete, just the way we are, and just the way we're not. And therefore, there's nothing to change, nothing to fix, nothing to add, nothing to take away. And in that space, you are right, I can just be with it and choose. That means that when someone is full, has, a, has a full awareness of themselves and accepts who they are with all of the resources and the resourcefulness 
they can become, and I quote you, the leader. The leader they most respect. So it's their, they become the leader that they most respect. Exactly, not right? Respect. No, no, not they others. Respect. Who cares about others, right? Because, you know, it's funny. Uh, I remember that question was posed to me. Like, who's the leader you most respect? And I'd come up with all kinds of great names. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin mm -hmm. Luther King, the Dalai Lama, one of my idols for a long time, Ambassador Andrew Young, you know, you name it. But my name never came out of my mouth. Oof. And there, there was this moment, it wasn't a moment of being disempowered or anything, but there was this moment of giving myself the permission of being connected to what I've come to call the collective mm -hmm. and realizing that if that sperm and that egg produce the most perfect instance of a human being it could, then I am Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. I am Martin Luther King. I am Ambassador Andrew Young. I am Jimmy Carter. I am, you know, and I get, I, I, I am the leader I most respect, not because I have studied long, amassed knowledge, amassed, amassed wealth, or think I'm deserving. Like maybe, Brigida, being the leader I most respect is my birthright. Mm. A birthright that I get to claim. And what I'm discovering is that the moment I claim that, I'm in deep trouble because <laughs> I can't be Sorrel anymore. That means that there's no competition. There's no competition. There's no, com there's no comparison because yeah. it is you are, I am the way that I am. Yeah. Created, like created through sperm and an egg with the resources that were available and and it being I being created. Yeah. And through that I am. Yeah. So that how do you become, how does Sorel become such a deep thinker and 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 an advocate of humanity in such a unique and deep and rich way. Um, I don't what want to. Take, that? I don't want to take credit for that. And uh, I want to say it this way: I'm saying I don't want to take credit for that because Sorel would be taking credit for it, as opposed to who I say I am. So if I juxtapose the two. Having said in the moment that I am a human being and my name is Sorel and I am the leader I most respect, in that moment I create this separation mm -hmm. where I'm not identifying myself anymore with the individuality that would relish a compliment, that would relish having become a deep thinker yet i'm not i'm not not that i am a human being <laughs> yeah so so i can say thank you brigida i get the acknowledgement and in the same moment to be present and aware enough that the thank you is really honoring you for seeing that and that what's real is that being a deep thinker is my birthright. Because mm -hmm. remember, the sperm and the egg came and created the most perfect instance of being a deep thinker. And as a human being, I had to surrender to that over time. So there is reading the people I loved, like reading the people who I said before I said it was me were 
the leaders I most respected. So I did read Mahatma Gandhi and I did sit and think with him. I never met him, but I did sit and think with him. And I did put myself in courses, whether in high school or in college. And I did put myself in environments where the conversations we were having required the human being I've become to think differently. And inside of a commitment I had to be a contribution to the world as a thinker, I had to commit what I call loosely identified. Mm -hmm. It's the gradual uh, doing away with my own individuality and my own identity tied to my body, my appearances, my, my that, right? So in that space, I, the, the me that I refer to when I say I am the leader I most respect, subjugates the individual and requires deep thinking of that in individual. So you, you do corporate trainings, you go into organizations, uh, probably HR specialists hire you to come and do your magic in their, uh, in their teams. When you go so deep with, um, with your insights, are they all able to follow you? Um, I have the, I have, I have the gift of having a business partner named Giovanni Gonzalez. I know Gio, he's a great guy. You know Gio, right? So I, I want to give Gio his uh, props and say that together we make a per perfect pair when we go to our clients. There is in corporate America, the code, so to speak. Don't what go code? deep, don't go deep. Oh. Keep it yeah. channel, give them tips, give them tools yeah. and techniques. Exactly, that's why I'm don't asking. Require, don't require transformation, right? There's that code. And uh, together with vow to do the following, to respect that code meaning mm -hmm. meeting people where they are, mm -hmm. but also to challenge the code mm -hmm. by demanding that people exercise uh, intellectual effort to actually go beyond the tips, beyond the tools and techniques to the source of ineffectiveness and the source of high performance. And to go to the source of high performance, you, you kind of have to look, right? So. Uh, We've created a body of work that takes the complexities of human behaviors and reduce them in very succinct, easy to digest leadership principles. Yeah. Um, one of the leadership principles, I'll just share one with you. Please. Is, uh, it says this, people follow people. That's it. It's that simple. And when we say people follow people, we stop the action. And now we have a conversation where human beings sitting around a corporate uh, board table discuss their views and their opinions of people follow people. And they discover that before people follow processes and procedures, before people follow a written mission or vision, they'll follow you. Mm -hmm. Now, are you for yourself someone you'd follow? Right. Uh, behaviors modeled. Yeah. Well, behaviors modeled for those that are not on the inside where you are on that deep of a level, right? Because if they truly embrace who they are, they don't necessarily need to follow anyone else. Yeah. And um, uh, if you give me uh, maybe two or three minutes, Please. I want to I paint a picture for the Please. journey 
that we love taking people through. Now, the journey begins with this fact, that when you wake up in the morning and you meet another human, you speak, you talk, you use words. And in using your words, you actually are impacting this other human being. So at any level you are in a corporation, if you speak to another human being, you're actually leading because it is through speaking that one impacts another's life, that one impacts another's performance. So we're fond of saying, if you're living, if you're breathing, you're a leader. Now, if you impact yourself and others through your speaking, then if you want to impact performance, what would you pay attention to? They talk about what they talk about and Finally, someone will turn to the conclusion of saying, not even the conclusion, I call it the insight or the revelation or the discovery that, oh my God, if I want to impact the performance of others, I have to impact what they're saying and what I'm saying. So this notion called a world comes into play. Mm -hmm. People get that the speaking that they speak actually creates a world. And inside of that world, in the same way as people are fond of saying, you know, it's like water to fish. That world actually dictates how you behave, how you speak, how you interact with one another. So very quickly, when people get that, they start to buy into the business of creating a different world. First, by acknowledging the world that the current speaking is giving. So when they get that, they go, mm -hmm. so you mean that the way it is now is something that I made up mm -hmm. through the speaking I've been speaking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, know. What a concept. <laughs> you mean if I speak differently, uh, we end up creating a different world? And if the that's different than the world itself dictates the speaking, the acting, the interaction, the performance, and the results. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get about the uh, let's get about the business of creating a different world. And the magical thing about this, Brigitte, is that it works at the individual level as well, at the team level, as well as the organizational level, as well as the institutional level, at the level, at the level of nations and at the level of the world, literally, our speaking gives us the world we live in. So people go, so if that's the case, how do we now speak? Mm -hmm. Great question. So they get together and they invent the new words they're going to say together. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's familiar with the creation of a vision, mission, and guiding principles, right? While they adorn the walls of corporate America all over the place, very few organizations spend the time to connect to these words emotionally and to yeah. actually have these words be promises they make that they intend to keep. So we work with our teams, with the teams of, uh, that we serve to make that emotional connection to what they create, to actually give life and infuse life into a set of guiding principles that they word in such a way that the guiding principles, just by reading them, coaches them on the fly. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's a piece of manifestation? Huh? Would yeah. you say that? It, it is in a way, right? Because... <laughs> You, as you manifest and create your own guiding principle, which is the equivalent for corporations and teams of saying, we are the accounting department of this company. Like we are human, we are human beings, right? Mm -hmm. We're the accounting department of this company and who we say we are, are these guiding principles. And we now give these guiding principles dominion over everything the way we speak, the way we interact with each other. And then some magic happens. And the magic that people get to discover, Brigitte, is that 
when you say I am that, mm -hmm. that now gets to create the future. Mm -hmm. And that can create any future. Mm -hmm. So it's not change management, but yet there's a change. There's, there's, let me scratch the word change. There's a transformation. Yeah. There is a transformation, but it's not like a flash in the pan. Right. Or something magical that happens to a human being. It is that choice you speak of. Mm -hmm. And it is human beings making that choice deliberately where the leader of the organization transforms. But here's the key. It's not an individual that transforms. It is that the leader ceases to be an individual. The leader becomes the words themselves. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the organization submits to that leader, not a person with a personality, with physical characteristics that I can like or dislike, approve or disapprove of, but a set of tenets that we pronounce upon ourselves as who we say we are. And corporations do that. And when they do that and they speak, something into existence like any initiative they may speak hey we're creating the next new widget that changes the world but that next new widget isn't being created just to serve the shareholders or to serve the bottom right. line it's There's being created as something brand new in the world and that something exists in this moment as the space inside of which each and every team member practices giving dominion to the guiding principles over them. And in that space, each is for themselves, the leader they most respect. It's the parts that make a greater it's a value judgment. It's the parts that create the whole. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, I love what you're saying. And, and uh, allow me to just stand on your shoulders. Please. It's the parts that disappear so that the whole can emerge. Mm. So that the whole can act so that the whole can be, because see, you know, I, I've, I've, we hear it all the time. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? Right. And I want to truncate it right now because that's what's coming to me. The whole is greater, period. Mm. It's not even the sum of the parts. It is the whole. And mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the transformational aspect of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. that individuals give themselves to the permission to disappear mm -hmm. in favor of the whole triumphing. We have a choice. Yeah. This is a beautiful conversation. And I know that our listeners and our viewers want to continue this conversation with you. How do they do that? Well, you can continue this conversation with me in many ways. Uh, Giovanni and I have created a gift to the world we call the Daily Huddle. Uh, we have partners and co-hosts and friends uh, from money matters to health and wellness to communications and relationships to spiritual matters to the business and leadership that in a way, given that we are together as that gift to you. You can connect with us at The Daily Huddle Zone on Facebook, which is the home of The Daily Huddle, or on YouTube at, at The Daily Huddle. And you can connect with me directly. Uh, one of the things I love to do is conversations with people just like you. And if you think this conversation is crazy and weird, forgive me. This is what you get when you're, when you're with me. <laughs> and you may contact me directly for one hour of 
free coaching. And I don't really call it coaching. I guess I'm calling it the privilege and honor to have a conversation with you. Mm. And should we choose to do something beyond that, then it'll be that. But for me, it is that privilege. And this link that appears on the screen, you can copy it, click on it, or go to LinkedIn, find me at Sorel Ketan, and uh, send me a message. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Yeah, thank you so much for this. So I, I want to reiterate the link to schedule a time with Sorel. It's schedule my appointment with Sorel Ketan, dot A-S dot M-E slash working dash meeting. I'm going to put it in the show notes as well. So schedule my appointment with Sorel Ketan, dot A-S dot me slash working dash meeting. Make sure that you get with Sorel. It's S-A-U-R-E-L. That's his first name, Sorel. And his last name is Ketan, Q-U-E-T-T-A-N. Sorel, this forward to speaking with you. Brigida, thank you so much for the privilege of being in conversation with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's always uh, transforming for me. It is. Uh, so I want you to know that uh, none of the words I've said tonight, I've said before. <laughs> and uh, I want to acknowledge the listening that you are that actually makes this human being speaking that way possible. Thank you. I honor you for the words. Thank you. I thank you for being on. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end today with these words. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a yeah. choice we're making. We're saving our lives. It's true. We'll make a better day. Just you. Just you and me. Thank you for being Just on. You and me. Thank you, Brigida. And for everyone else, make sure that you get with Sorel, that you um, get in touch with him, that you find him on LinkedIn, that you schedule a time with him. And I will see you all again next Tuesday, same time, same place for the Success Pattern Show. Until then. You can't see it, Brigida, but I have a little cake with a candle on it. Blow it and make a wish. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and you will notice opportunities to apply success patterns daily while eagerly anticipating next week's content rich success patterns.